Just expected to come and walk through him. Oh, here's a good entry. Oh. If you're a fan of BJJ, then you've probably seen this move. But surprisingly, no one really knows much about the creator of this technique. Yet his name can be heard everywhere. Choiba. The Choi Bar. Choiba. Choiba. And if not for one of your guys' favorite grapplers, Lachlan Giles, the identity behind the creator of the Choi Bar would still be a mystery. Choi Won Choi, or Choi Young Won, as he's also known as, is one of the most famous grapplers that you've never heard of. But in this video, let's change that. My first year at Black Belt Worlds, I came up first round against a guy, Choi Won Choi. And as soon as I went for the cross face, he gripped onto my arm, swung over the top, and started to attack, and actually finished the, the arm bar on me. In this interview, Lachlan talks about his first encounter with Choi, and I've narrowed down this period to be sometime between 2012 and 2015. And I remember some of the Atos guys going, oh, did he get the Choi bar? And I was like, Ah, oh, that's what he was doing. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the video from the match, but our journey to find out more about Choi actually starts way earlier. Competing in that year's Pan Championship, or Pan Ams as we used to call it, was a lower belt Choi, performing the first ever Choi bar that I could find. Go again, go, go, go! The quality of the video is terrible, but we can see that Choi had already began working on perfecting his move, although he did have some setbacks. But he would continue to refine the Choi bar moving forward. And in 2010, Choi now a brown belt under Team Paragon would show off the basics of his Choi bar system. One thing that I noticed was Choi's preference in playing a left sided supine guard. You gotta go, Choi! Often using a variation of the collar sleeve guard in order to set up his underhook. But there were still some missing details that continued to hold him back. And I want you to see if you can spot them. Notice how his opponent is able to jump across his body and put him in a bad position. We'll go over the answer later in the video, but keep that in mind as we move forward. One of the questions that I kept seeing was, what exactly is the Choi Bar? And one of the best answers that I found also came from Lachlan himself. The Choi Bar is really, it's an armbar. The Choi Bar is an, a way of getting to the armbar where you essentially climb over into their head to get towards them. Armbar. In fact, moves like the reverse armbar or the arm saddle have been around forever, but what makes the Choi Bar unique is its gripping in addition to inverting or spinning over the arm. And while there are moves that are similar, like this Kimura from bottom, I've noticed that there are three major downsides to this attack that the Choi Bar fixes. One, this move has been around for a long time, so there are a lot of counters. It's already behind my back. Yes. So this is bad. It's starting to get really bad, right? A little bit more. Ah, you see? So I can still catch. And then look what I do, I actually turn my hip in. Ah, yeah. Two, the Kimura uses a lot of strength, so it's not suitable for everyone. And lastly, the lack of transitions out of the Kimura make the Choi Bar a better alternative in my eyes. And look at my angle that I have right now. All right, this is very, very bad for him. Which was further supported by the Beyond Jiu Jitsu podcast in this interview. So to reach over for the Kimura, it's my right arm that reaches over the top right and comes in round behind the armpit to lock it up. Like, mm -hmm. like people don't even need to attack it. Like I just feel really weak in the back of my shoulder there. Like when people hide their hand and try to, I don't enjoy that position at all. But so when we look at Choi bars, the entrance is different. It's like your, your other hand kind of reaches a bit deeper. So you get this gable grip, like a shoulder clamp grip. Jumping back to our timeline, we find Choi in 2013, and at some point, he had switched over to Team Atos. Hey, what's up everyone? Professor Jagovo here. We are at Atos Jiu-Jitsu headquarters. That at the time was made up of Andre Galval's team in San Diego, as well as the Mendez brothers in Costa Mesa, where we can see Choi's influence start to spread. <laughs> with even Hoffa experimenting with the Choi Bar, leading up to that year's ADCC. But it would be one more year before the Choi Bar would hit the center stage. In 2014, Choi Won Choi would enter the IBJJF World Championship, and he didn't disappoint. Winning his first match in under one minute with a textbook Choi Bar, starting from the collar sleeve, leg pummeling over his opponent's head and inverting for a nice arm bar. And in his next match, we even get to see a finish that shows a lot of the mechanics that I believe are lacking in the modern day Choi Bar.
stops. Namely, how Choi always tries to keep his head and body angled towards his opponent's legs, as going opposite can lead to getting stacked, as well as the importance of using one of your arms to control your opponent's hips, while the other one controls their arm. And while this might seem counterintuitive, it's fundamental in having a great Choi Bar. Going 2 for 2 on Choi Bar attacks, Choi was on top of the world, but his next match would be his hardest challenge facing off against Sean Roberts, a grappler known for his unorthodox style, as well as sweeping a prime Hadolfo Vieta, who at the time was impossible to do anything against. And Choi even managed to sneak in a Choi bar right from the start of the match. But Sean managed to escape, and we get to see what happens when the Choi bar doesn't work. It actually leaves your opponent's legs open to attack, but considering the time period, all we had was the 50-50 and the knee bar back then. We also see a possible entry from the Choi bar into what would later be considered the Brata Plata. So I'm gonna hold my own wrist, okay, and pass my arm through one more time. And the Tariko Plata. I'm gonna let go, I'm gonna grab my own thigh, and here we are into the position but I'll have to save those for another video. And just look at this sequence. If Choi had gone for the Kimura from the same position, I don't believe he would have been able to get Sean's arm extended, but due to the nature of the Choi grip, it can generate a lot of torque, which we get to see moments later when Choi goes to re-attack. Shifting Sean's weight away from himself using his top leg and then pummeling that same leg between Sean's arm and leg. I also want you to take note of Choi's leg position. As that's another part that I think a lot of people miss out on. Throughout most of Choi's attacks, he tries to keep that bottom leg between his opponent's legs, even if it might seem like it's trapped. And as you saw from earlier, the top leg helps Choi off balance and then is used to help him separate their arm. Ideally, he'll try to feed his leg all the way across their body like this. But it's okay to take a pit stop between your opponent's legs if there's no space. And the last detail is to control your opponent's leg before they can jump over your body. Strong and flexible grapplers might be able to maintain their Troy grip without letting go. But if you find yourself not in that category and you're fighting larger and stronger people, you wanna keep this in mind. Keep your head near their legs and go for it. If 2014 was Troy's breakout year, then the next year would submit his legacy on the Jiu Jitsu world where he would take his skills overseas and test himself and his Troy bar against the best in the world. Starting off in Lisbon, Portugal for the European Championship. Choi would get another quick finish in under a minute, and in his next match, we can see Choi hitting an octopus guard back take. When his opponent goes to turn away from him in the half guard instead of cross facing, but it would be his next match where he would really get the chance to show off. Facing off against AJ Agazarn, a fighter that is probably more well known for hanging around Jake Paul, but has an impressive resume, including winning the IBJJF Nogi Worlds, as well as a silver medal at the 2017 ADCC World Championship. So this match wouldn't be easy. And Choi almost gets his signature move early on, but AJ managed to clear Choi's top leg, which if you guys like modern jiu-jitsu would be a great entry into the Matrix back take. And Choi manages to persist in controlling AJ's arm and seeking to maintain his position, eventually seizing an opportunity to threaten AJ's back. But the two are later restarted and a nice double leg by AJ turns the match in his favor. At the Europeans, Choi would find himself going to Japan, first hitting up the Nagoya Open against a crazy big opponent. Where he gets a nice setup into the Choi Bar and then making his way over to Tokyo for the Asian Championship, where he would face off against Roberto Satoshi, a silver medalist at the IBJJF World Championship. And he would employ a strategy that we hadn't yet seen against Choi. Unlike other athletes who typically pressure in while trying to pass, Satoshi instead used more of an outside passing style that made great use of his lanky build, and this seemed to give Choi a hard time, but he did manage to work in some of his single leg X and 50-50 positions. 
Still, Satoshi won the match, and shows off another one of the weaknesses of the Choi Bar, especially in the Gi. 2016 will see a new take on the Choi Bar from none other than Mikey Musumeci. My name is Mikey Musumeci. I'm a black belt in submission wrestling and I'm here to do jiu-jitsu. Who at the time was representing Team Atos. He's up against Art of Jiu-Jitsu Atos representative Mikey Musumeci. And had even been awarded his brown belt by Guy Mendez, fighting his iconic rival, Zhao Miao. Mikey would integrate the Choi Bar into his De La Hiva and Underhook De La Hiva game, like this. But instead of going for the armbar, which probably wouldn't work on a Meow Brother anyway, he instead opts to go for the back with what I like to call the Choi Bar Bolo. And in 2017, the Choi Bar would make it sleep onto the Nogi radar. After Craig Jones, student of Lackland, managed to snag a nice Choi Bar on multiple time ADCC champion and IBJJF Black Belt World Champion Sanji Hibeto during his famous run at ADCC 2017. And from Craig, who at this point was a part of the Danaher crew, we can also guess that the Choi Bar began to spread to the other athletes on their team, with Nikki Ryan pulling off a nice Choi Bar on Phil Harris at the 2018 Polaris 7. A year later, Lackland would hit the Choi Bar in his match versus Joe Riggs at the Kinetic. But what happened to Choi? 2019 would see Choi make his comeback to competition, first facing off against up and coming star of the sport, Hassam Rita, and then going up against mixed martial arts legend, Shin Aoki at the Spider Invitational. Without a doubt, Choi Won Choi has had a major impact on the sport, and I would even go as far as to say that he has changed the meta of Nogi grappling, something that we haven't seen since the addition of the modern leg lock system. And the Choi Bar continues to evolve. With athletes like Mikey and the next generation furthering its development and finally reaching its peak at the 2022 ADCC World Championship with at least five matches incorporating the Choi Bar. An arm now by getting on, under the inside of that far leg. You could also look to start to pass. Watch out for this arm walk here. Owen's success here in this bracket. Oh my goodness! Will this be it? Who is the Brazilian trials winner? Oh, look at that. Tap. And after watching all of these matches, I have to say that Choi Wan Choi still does it the best. His persistence in perfecting one technique for close to two decades, all while going up against bigger and stronger opponents, is something that we should all celebrate and remember him for. And while the Choi Bar isn't invincible, as there will be times when going for it can lead you to getting stacked, or passed, or put in other bad positions. Overall, I think the Choi Bar is a great move for Gi and no Gi, and you should definitely add it to your game. And if you like this video, be sure to check out this next video on the Worm Guard right over here.